In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some templates I've created for 3ds Max that will allow you to use Biped to create animations and characters for Unreal Engine without any need for retargeting. The links to obtain these templates will be in the video description. I've created four templates. Uh, you've got male and female versions of the Unreal 4 skeleton. There's the male, and here's the female, and male and female versions of the Unreal 5 skeleton. The male is named Manny, and the female is named Quinn. So that covers all four of the uh, Unreal mannequins. Okay, for the first part of this video, I'll go through the process of exporting an animation. I'll be using the Unreal 5 Manny skeleton for this, but the process is identical for all of the templates. So when you open the template is in 3ds Max, if you go into your Scene Explorer or Layer Manager, you'll see the scene is organized into layers. Layer 1 contains the uh, character model itself. I toggle that on and off. Layer 2 contains the Unreal Skeleton, and Layer 3 contains the Biped Skeleton. Layers 4 and 5 are hidden by default. They just contain various rigging helpers that you can ignore, so you can leave those hidden. If I hide the character, you can clearly see the biped, and if I hide the biped, here you can see the Unreal Skeleton, and You'll notice it's been nicely color-coded to match the colors of the biped, which is nice. Okay, at this point, all you have to do is simply animate the biped as you normally would. So if I grab an arm here, move it around, just animate it like you normally would, and the Unreal Skeleton will follow right along. Uh, you can use all of Biped's tools. You can use the Motion Mixer to combine multiple animations. You can clean up mocap using the Workbench. You can create collections of poses to copy and paste and use layers to, uh, you know, create animation layers on top of each other. Anything you can do with Biped, the Unreal Skeleton will follow right along. So let me hide the character here just to show you here. Even if I rotate the... Let me use this other hand. If I rotate the hand here, you can see in the middle there, those are twist bones, and those automatically follow right along. Move the leg, everything follows right along. Anything you can do with biped will transfer over to the Unreal Skeleton. All right, let me show you just how easy it is to export an animation to Unreal. So for this, I am going to load in a BIP file of a dancing animation. There we go. Let me just play a little bit of this. Okay, and of course the Unreal skeleton follows right along with the biped. Now let's export this to Unreal. Since I'm only concerned with exporting the animation, all I have to do is select the Unreal Skeleton layer, and I'm just pointing out I'm not exporting the biped, only exporting the Unreal Skeleton. So with that selected, go to File, Export Selected, and let's call this Manny Dance. Okay, and in the Export Settings dialog, the important settings to be concerned about is uh, make sure that Convert Deforming Dummies to Bones is checked, uh, Animation, Bake Animation, Resample All, and make sure all the deformation settings are checked, and then Z Up. Since 3ds Max and Unreal both use Z Up, just make sure that setting is uh, checked, and then hit OK. Moving over to Unreal Engine, I've got the uh, default third-person template opened, and in the content browser, I've navigated to the Unreal 5 mannequin folder, since that's the one I use, the uh, Manny skeleton. And then I'm just going to click on Import, choose my Manny Dance FBX file, 
and I'll just leave all the import settings at default and click on import. And just like that right here, no errors, our animation is imported. And let's take a look at that. So I'm just going to drag out this uh, mannequin into the scene and I'm going to drag and drop my man uh, animation right on top of that and hit simulate. And there we go. That is just fantastic. Just like that, we went from uh, animating with biped in 3ds Max to uh, Unreal Engine. Now this animation can be used on any character that uses this skeleton. So anything from the marketplace that uses this skeleton, you can drop your animation right on top of it. Just that easy. So that is the basic workflow for exporting animations to Unreal. Uh, but back here in 3ds Max, I want to show one more thing. At the character's feet, you may have noticed this blue arrow. Um, this is the root bone controller. Um, what this does, it allows you to transfer the character's basic movement to the Unreal Skeleton's root bone. Now, if I click on this and go over to the Modify panel, you'll see I've wired in a couple custom options here. Allow root rotation and allow root movement. So this allows you to export your animations with root movement and root rotation if you want that. Now, it's beyond the scope of this tutorial, but what the root bone does is it, um, within Unreal, it will allow for things like driving character movement or proper foot placement on une uneven surfaces. So I've built this in, depending on how your character is set up in Unreal, you may want both of these options or one of them or, or none of them. So if I uncheck everything, you'll say, you'll see the, uh, root bone stays fixed at the origin. And one final note about the uh, root bone controller. It has what um, I would call basic jump detection built in. So to demonstrate that, what I mean here is if I grab the biped center of mass and move it down, you'll see the root bone controller stays fixed to the ground plane until the feet leave the ground. Then it goes up with the biped. So this is a useful feature of this rig, especially if you're going to be animating jumps. All right, now let's move on to exporting a custom character. Okay, uh, exporting custom characters is fairly straightforward and probably not much different than what you're used to. Uh, what you would do is open up one of the templates. In this case, I'm going to use the Unreal 4 skeleton. And since you're going to be importing your own custom character, you don't really don't need this mannequin model. So you can either hide the layer or just delete it altogether. Then the next step would be importing your custom character and turning on figure mode and fitting the biped to your custom character. And you can move, rotate and scale any of the biped parts and the Unreal Skeleton will automatically fit itself to the uh, new biped proportions, which is just fantastic. So you can make some pretty wacky dimensions here and the Unreal Skeleton will automatically fit itself to these new proportions. Okay, for the final steps, I'm gonna move over here to a uh, finished character that I've done. Here's a, my own custom character that I've imported into the scene and I've already gone through the process of fitting the biped to the proportions of this character. And the next step would be after that is I added a skin modifier to the character and under the bone list are all the Unreal Skeleton bones. Now that's important. You're skidding your character to the Unreal Skeleton. You're not skinning it to the biped. So only add the Unreal Skeleton bones here. Then the final step after that would be to simply uh, weight your character to those bones. And you can do that however you like it, whether you like to use envelopes, painting weights, whatever. Then once you have the character skinned to your satisfaction and you're happy uh, with everything, all you have to do is export it. So you just select your character model with a skin modifier and also 
the Unreal Skeleton and go to File, Export Selected, and just give it a name, My Character. And you can use the same settings that you used for exporting animations. That will work just fine. Okay, once again, over in Unreal Engine, I've got the third person template open and I've opened up the content browser and navigated to the Unreal 4 skeleton folder because that is what my character is using in this case. And then I'll click on import, choose my character, and the leave all the settings at default. The only option you need to make sure is checked is use T0 as reference pose. Make sure that is checked. Click on import and bam, just like that, no errors. Our character is into Unreal Engine. Now the uh, material is not set up, but uh, otherwise it imported just fine. I can set up the material in Unreal and he's ready to go. Okay, and as one final example, here is my character in Unreal Engine using the advanced locomotion system that is available for free on the Unreal Engine marketplace. And the beauty of this is that the character is, serves as a direct drop-in replacement for the Unreal Mannequin. So that is the beauty of these templates is that any character you export is 100% compatible with anything that uses the Unreal Mannequin. You can simply export it and it works right out of the box. So that about wraps it up. I hope you find these templates useful in your work and have fun animating. Bye-bye. <laughs>